Nintendo DS family are the second best selling game consoles of all time. So when we say everybody owned a DS, we're really barely exaggerating. The best thing about the multiple models is that they all give you access to a wide variety of amazing Nintendo DS games from all kinds of genres. Some, believe it or not, are even more entertaining than PictoChat. And if you can't get on board with that, let me run through the list. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are the 20 best Nintendo DS games of all time. Number 20, Sonic Rush. While everyone was busy laughing at 3D Sonic as he made a fool of himself over and over again, 2D Sonic was actually starring in some excellent adventures on portable systems. The excellent dimps who made the great Sonic Advance trilogy continued their streak of amazing Sonic games on the DS with the excellent Sonic Rush. Sonic Rush has you controlling Sonic and Blaze as you attempt to stop Dr. Eggman, no surprises there, and his alternate dimensional version, whose name I don't really want to say, but you get it. Sonic Rush adds the boost ability from the 3D games, which works surprisingly well in 2D. Using this, Sonic Rush emphasizes speed more so than arguably any other Sonic game. It has its pros and cons, the biggest pro being that it feels amazing to go so fast, while the biggest con is that the level design can be a tad basic at times. Nonetheless, this is easily one of the best games on the DS and is a must play for any Sonic fans. The game's also composed by Twitter famous legendary video game composer Hideki Naganuma. You know, the guy who's obsessed with Big Chunkus and Cat Girls. That, that one. Number 19, WarioWare Touched. Whilst the Nintendo DS family has no shortage of WarioWare games with WarioWare Snapped for DSi and the excellent WarioWare DIY, which allows you to make your own micro games, the top DS WarioWare game is easily WarioWare Touched. For those who haven't played a WarioWare game, the WarioWare series involves you completing mini games in a short amount of time with little instruction. It's rapid fun that you won't be able to put down. WarioWare Touched is just a really solid WarioWare game, coming with 180 micro games separated across nine separate stages. Each of these stages also contains a boss fight, which are fun final challenges. The short narratives that are established to justify the nine stages are also a lot of fun. The cast of the WarioWare series is great, and it's a shame they don't really appear in Mario games. They're way more interesting than 99% of Mario characters. The game makes use of the DS, especially its touch capabilities, hence the name Wario we're touched. It's just a great time. All the WarioWare games are good, but this is one of the best. Number 18, The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. After a bunch of edgy teenagers complained about the art style of Wind Waker because they wanted Zelda to be cool and dark instead of just a good game, the more cartoony Zelda games had to go into hiding on Nintendo's handheld systems. A direct sequel to Wind Waker, The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass feels a lot like a portable version of that game. It has the sailing that Wind Waker is known for, a lot of the same characters, and the same art style, although this is the DS, so don't get your hopes up too high when it comes to its visuals. The biggest problem with the game is the Temple of the Ocean King. The Temple of the Ocean King is a dungeon where you have to constantly wait to avoid getting killed by immortal enemies. You have to do it quickly as you're timed, and you have to revisit the dungeon multiple times throughout the game. Other than that, it's a great Zelda title that instills the sense of adventure that the series is known for. It's one of the best DS games. Just prepare yourself for the worst dungeon in the entire series. Number 17, Kirby Superstar Ultra. Kirby Superstar Ultra is definitely one of the best remakes on the DS. It takes the best Kirby game, Kirby Superstar, and makes it even better by adding a ton of new games and making them all look a bit more pretty. Kirby Superstar was already home to numerous separate short Kirby games, but Kirby Superstar Ultra adds even more. Spring Breeze, a game from the original, which was essentially a remake of Kirby's Dream Land, is given a harder version with Revenge of the King. Meta Nightmare Ultra allows you to play through the pre-existing games as Meta Knight, all connected to make one big game. Helper to Hero allows you to play as one of 20 characters as you fight against 14 different bosses. Finally, Kirby Superstar Ultra adds the True Arena, a final challenge in a game that beforehand had very little difficulty in it. If that wasn't enough, the game also adds three new sub games because apparently Kirby Superstar Ultra wants to take up literally all of your life. Number 16, Advance Wars Dual Strike. Advance Wars is one of the most underappreciated franchises Nintendo has ever published. It seems to be something that most Nintendo fans are at least vaguely aware of, but most of them haven't even thought of playing a game in the series. Luckily for anybody who wants to get into the franchise, if you own a DS, one of the best Advance Wars games exists on the system. Advance Wars Dual Strike. Wait, never mind. Like most DS games, it's ridiculously expensive. You should probably just wait for Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp for Switch. That'll probably be alright. 
Anyway, Advanced Wars Jewel Strike is a great entry in the series, even if you have to sell your kidney to afford to play it. The game puts you in control of Jake and Rachel of the Orange Star Army as you fight against the Black Hole Army. It's a turn-based strategy game where you need to navigate a map killing the troops of the enemy army, and it's a lot of fun. Advanced Wars Jewel Strike and the wider Advanced Wars series definitely isn't for everybody, but if you like strategy games, you'll most likely love it. Number 15, Animal Crossing Wild World. Animal Crossing always seemed like a good fit for handhelds. It's a series where you're encouraged to return daily for small periods of time, something that definitely works better on something you can take around with you. If you look at the portable Animal Crossing games in comparison to the home console versions, that's made even clearer. New Horizons sold 32.63 million, New Leaf sold 12.93 million, and this game sold 11.75 million, while the original GameCube game only sold 2.71 million, and the Wii game City Folk only sold 4.32 million. Animal Crossing clearly belongs on handheld, and Animal Crossing Wild World was the first game in the series to truly demonstrate that. Animal Crossing Wild World isn't much different than the original game, and it doesn't really need to be. It was a way for people to play Animal Crossing on the go. Nobody really expected it to be a huge shakeup of the Animal Crossing formula. Yeah, there's no point going back to this game with both Animal Crossing New Horizons and Animal Crossing New Leaf existing now, but it's still easily one of the best DS games and brought joy to a lot of people. Number 14, New Super Mario Brothers. We've seen it time after time, a great game is retroactively ruined because its developers decided to throw it into the photocopier and give us numerous near identical games. New Super Mario Bros. is one of the best 2D Mario games ever made. It's just a shame that its legacy was completely ruined by the rest of the New Super Mario Bros. series. New Super Mario Bros. feels like the logical next step for 2D Mario after Super Mario Bros. World. It introduces new power-ups like the blue shell which allow you to slide along the ground, the mini mushroom which serves as an interesting take on power-ups, essentially being a power down, which you need to access certain secrets, thus giving you a nice risk reward system. And then there's the Mega Mushroom, which allows you to grow giant and cause mayhem throughout the Mushroom Kingdom. New Super Mario Brothers has the most creative bosses out of any 2D Mario game, as they're giant versions of pre-existing Mario enemies instead of the usual Koopalings. Yeah, it isn't as good as the likes of Super Mario Brothers 3 or Super Mario World, but it's closer in quality to those games than you might expect. Number 13, Super Scribblenauts. Super Scribblenauts is a game where you can make anything. While the original Scribblenauts was also a great DS game, Super Scribblenauts introduces adjectives, making it automatically better. Not only can you now create any object you want, you can also add characteristics to it. The aim of Super Scribblenauts is to solve problems throughout 120 different levels using your godlike power. It's a lot of fun thinking of creative solutions to the puzzles put in front of you. The series was improved later on with Scribblenauts Unlimited, which set the missions in open worlds, but that's not on the DS, so it's not eligible for this list. Super Scribblenauts is just as impressive, having to create models for practically every object known to man, which couldn't have been an easy job for the developers, but is phenomenal for us. Number 12, Mario and Luigi, Bowser's Inside Story. Who would have thought that a game about getting vored by Bowser would end up being one of the best Mario RPGs ever made? In Mario and Luigi, Bowser's Inside Story, a giant Bowser accidentally swallows Mario and Luigi. At this point in the game, you control both Mario and Luigi as they explore Bowser's insides and Bowser himself as he explores the Mushroom Kingdom. Interestingly, what you do as Bowser can affect what happens to Mario and Luigi and vice versa. Bowser is easily one of the best Mario characters, so getting to control him in anything but a sports game is great. Whilst the Mario and Luigi series has always had interesting locations to explore, the inside of Bowser is definitely one of the best. I mean, where else could you fight Goombule? Weird amalgamations of Goombas and Amoeba. Speaking of which, give us Goombul for Smash. The game was later remade for the Nintendo 3DS with Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story and Bowser Jr's Journey. While it's not a bad remake, there's one problem. You can already play the original Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story on the 3DS, as the system is backwards compatible with the Nintendo DS. Number 11, Tetris DS. Yes, Tetris DS is one of the best DS games ever made. Did we stutter? Tetris is an addictive puzzle game that anyone can understand 
mind. The thing is, at this point in time, we all own at least 10 different versions of Tetris. A Tetris game is going to need to do something special to warrant a purchase. What about numerous different modes which celebrate the legacy of Nintendo? There's a marathon mode where you have to get through all 20 Nintendo themed levels. And after you beat that, you can unlock endless mode. Mission mode gives you a variety of missions to complete, which is a nice change of pace from regular old Tetris. And there are enough missions to keep you busy. Push mode is a competitive mode where you must push your opponent's floor upwards so they lose. Touch mode is Tetris with the stylus. Catch mode involves you catching falling Tetris pieces. And puzzle mode involves you selecting the Tetriminos needed to clear out predetermined unfinished lines. Each mode is a lot of fun and helps make this one one of the best versions of Tetris ever. Number 10, Super Mario 64 DS. Developed to demonstrate the power of the Nintendo DS, Super Mario 64 DS was astounding at the time of its release. It solidified the idea that the DS was essentially a portable N64. To many people, Super Mario 64 DS was the first time they saw a 3D game on a handheld, and it was mind-blowing. Many problems do exist here that didn't in the original game, but it introduces enough improvements that Super Mario 64 DS is many people's preferred way of playing the game. It's not ideal playing a game that was clearly designed to utilize an analog stick with a D-pad, but the game has four playable characters to make up for it. Not only that, it adds a ton of fun mini games, new levels, and new stars in the pre-existing levels. If only Nintendo could mix Super Mario 64 DS with the original version to make the definitive Super Mario 64 experience, then all would be right with the world. Number 9, The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. Who would have thought The Legend of Zelda and Trains would mesh so well? One is a series that at its best encourages exploration, and one is literally on a one-way track with a prefix destination. The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks uses the train as a way to get Link between numerous smaller areas that he can explore, something that suits handheld gaming really well. The train gameplay isn't exactly as compelling as the regular Zelda gameplay, but it's fun enough. The fact that the train is customizable is also a nice little touch. You're spending so much time on the train that it's nice to be able to design it to look appealing to you, even if the customization is slightly limited. While the game is named after riding a train, that's not the highlight of Spirit Tracks. The highlight is Princess Zelda. You'll be spending more time with Zelda here than in any of the other Legend of Zelda games, and she's a great character in Spirit Tracks. She's probably the best companion in the series, although when her competition is Navi and Fi, it's not that hard. Number 8, Pokemon Black 2 and Pokemon White 2. Pokemon was ever present on the Nintendo DS. We got two whole Pokemon generations on the handheld, alongside numerous spin-offs. While Pokemon Diamond and Pearl are great games, Pokemon Platinum's even better, and Pokemon Black and White are some of the best in the series. It's Pokemon Black 2 and Pokemon White 2 which really shine. Pokemon Black 2 and White 2 took everything that worked in the original Pokemon Black and White and removed what didn't. The game's region no longer hides all the non-generative 5 Pokemon in the post game. You can now find Pokemon from generation 1 all the way to 5 all over the region. The region's size has also been expanded, so there's even more to explore. And there's more post game than most Pokemon games combined. The story isn't as good as the original, but it's still one of the best ever told in the main series games, touching on topics such as a Pokemon's free will. Pokemon Black 2 and White 2 definitely feel like a last hurrah for Game Freak, since after that, the series' quality definitely dropped. Number 7, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, Trials and Tribulations. The original Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney trilogy were Game Boy Advance games, only released in Japan before being improved in every way for the DS and given to us overseas. The entire original trilogy for the Nintendo DS are great, but this particular one is easily the best. In the Ace Attorney series, you play as a defense attorney, trying to prove that a bunch of cartoony people are innocent by finding evidence to use in the courtroom. Yeah, it's not exactly an accurate defense attorney simulator. In the original three games, you mostly play as defense attorney Phoenix Wright. Yet in this particular game, you also get to play as Phoenix Wright's mentor, Mia Fey. Trials and Tribulation serves as a great conclusion to the original trilogy, and it gives us insight into Phoenix Wright's past, which makes him an even more compelling character. All the five cases you'll take on are excellent, and while some are better than others, they're still some of the best in the series. Number 6, Mario Kart DS. Since each Mario Kart game improves upon what came before, there's not a lot of reason to go back to the older ones, though there are a few exceptions to that rule, and one of them is Mario Kart DS. Mario Kart DS has a few features you can only get there, creating your own kart emblem, but also its missions. It is absolutely the peak of single-player Mario Kart because of these missions. 
levels. There are six sets and each set has eight levels and a boss fight. Some of them are just races, but a few of them are actual fights where you need to use your cart and power-ups as weapons. There are 16 new tracks and 16 returning tracks, including fan favorite courses like Waluigi Pinball and TikTok Clock. Mario Kart DS also introduces the character of Rob to the series, this being the first time a non-Mario character has been in a Mario Kart game. And you thought Endgame was a huge crossover. Number five, Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow. If you wanted a good Castlevania game during the 2000s, your best bet was to look on the Nintendo handhelds. And if you did, you'd likely find the amazing Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow. This one is a direct sequel to Aria of Sorrow. You play as Soma Cruz, a super powered high school student because 90% of everything made in Japan takes place in a high school. The game takes place in the future because this isn't your grandpa's Castlevania. Just like Aria of Sorrow, the main gimmick is Soma's ability to take powers from enemies that he defeats. A new addition is the magical seal system where you'll use the touch screen to create seals to trap bosses because it wouldn't be a DS game without some tacked on touchscreen use. It's just a really solid Castlevania game that desperately needs to be bundled into a collection since it currently costs an arm and a leg to purchase. Unfortunately, given it's looking like the next Castlevania collection will focus on the Game Boy Advance games, we might be waiting a while. Number four, The World Ends With You. Taking place in a hyper stylized version of Shibuya, starring Neku Sakuraba, a kid who dresses up weird even for a world where everybody dresses weird, The World Ends With You is the best JRPG on the Nintendo DS. Yes. We said it. The story centers on the Reaper's Game, a game where those who died can participate to be rewarded in the afterlife or be given a second chance at life. Neku and his partner must team up to beat each day's mission within the Reaper's Game. It's both a story worth experiencing for yourself and ridiculously complex, so you're gonna wanna keep a notepad on hand. It's very obvious that Kingdom Hearts creator Tetsuya Nomura worked on this. The gameplay is super interesting. You control both Neku and his partner simultaneously, each on a different screen. Screen. It sounds super complex, but you'll quickly learn how to do it. Number three, Castlevania Order of Ecclesia. Castlevania Order of Ecclesia is peak Metroidvania Castlevania, arguably even better than Symphony of the Night. Order of Ecclesia allows you to explore numerous different locations as opposed to one giant map. It still has the exploration you're looking for in these kind of games, but it's got the addition of the variety that the level-based Castlevania games brought to the table. Another notable aspect of Order of Ecclesia is that it features the first female Castlevania protagonist, Shanoa, who is one of the coolest main characters in the series. The system to take enemies' abilities from earlier Castlevania games has been expanded with the Glyph system. These are your weapons and magical abilities, and the fact that you can equip multiple at a time allows for dual wielding and the ability to combine glyphs together. It's a much more in-depth system than anything you've seen before and allows you to truly play how you want to. Order of Ecclesia also has a beautiful gothic inspired look, which makes the game look distinct. It's such a shame that like most DS games, it's ridiculously expensive. Please Konami, stop making pachinko for two seconds and give us Order of Ecclesia on modern systems, we're begging you. Number two, Professor Layton and the Lost Future. Detective games that feature a man who is reminded of puzzles by literally everything and some kid he hangs out with, the Professor Layton series are some of the most charming games ever made. Okay, the actual mysteries don't end up making much sense even when the game explains them to you, but that kind of doesn't matter when the characters are so likable and there's so many brain teasers that'll keep you busy and make you feel smart. While the entire trilogy are amazing games, it's Professor Layton and the Lost Future or Unwound Future if you're American, which is easily the best. This one serves as a great conclusion to Professor Layton's story, with the games that came out afterwards mostly being prequels. We won't spoil anything, but if you don't cry at the end, you might not have a heart. Number one, Pokemon Heart Gold and Pokemon Soul Silver. These games are peak Pokemon. Remakes of the Generation 2 games Pokemon Gold and Silver, Heart Gold and Soul Silver are still yet to be topped. The games have two separate regions to explore, making them easily the largest Pokemon games. Your Pokemon can walk behind you, letting you connect to them more than any other game. And as remakes, they improve upon everything wrong with the excellent Generation 2 games. Not that there was much that was wrong with them. No longer are the games buggy, no longer is Kanto barely populated, no longer does the game have the graphics of a Game Boy game, although that can't exactly be blamed on gold and silver. The game's story is also a bit more fleshed out and there's more post game added to the already huge post game. The game also came with the Poker Walker, a way to walk with your Pokemon in real life way before Pokemon Go did it. The Poker Walker for some reason was one of the most accurate pedometers at its time of release. How do you try to make a fun accessory for your monster capturing game and then accidentally make one of the best pedometers on the market? We don't know, but we're not complaining.